The Worst Equestrian Necromancer Chapter 19 A Lone Intruder Last Chance was not a complex pony. He liked good drinks, good food, and good company. To fund his love of fine things, he had pursued a line of work which provided plenty of wealth. Tomb Raiding. He used some of the money gained by his explorations to buy more and better equipment, which allowed entry into even wealthier tombs, which meant even more money. Sure, some of the more noble adventurers would say selling his finds to the highest bidder was immoral, but he didn't really care as long as it paid. If he was the one who put in the efforts to find an untouched ruin, then he got to decide what happened to the stuff inside it. Like he was about to do with a sunken city of Innsmair. Thought lost for centuries, the last bastion of the Siren race was under his hooves. Just the wealth on display in the entry chamber he'd managed to find would more than pay for his troubles. He lifted his breathing mask with a smile. Well, well, looky here. I see emerald necklaces, gold statues, and even pretty paintings. He looked over the room, filled with artifacts of bygone eras, but paused abruptly. A sign hung above the door to the next room, obviously a recent addition. After all, the sirens hadn't been known to use tape. In bold letters, it said, Be warned, this is a hard hat area. Please take a helmet from the rack on the other side of the door before proceeding. Beside the text was an oddly proportioned skull wearing an orange hard hat with a skeletal thumb pointed up. Last Chance stared for a moment before moving to peek through the doorway. Sure enough, there was a rack with several rows of hard hats sitting just inside the door. Last Chance stared for a moment before muttering. Jeez, obvious ruin trap is obvious. Even if it's weird. He took a step forward and began looking around only to quickly roll backwards when one of his tools warned him that he'd triggered a magic sensor. Unfortunately, he wasn't quick enough to dodge something hitting him in the head and tumbling to the floor, though it was far lighter than he'd expect from a trap. Examining the object, he found only an empty cardboard box. What in Tartarus? A male voice spilled from the hard hat rack. Recorded message begins. The voice paused for a moment, and Chance flinched as Celestia's voice spilled from the rack. Oh, silly pony. Where's your hard hat? Chance stared at the rack before sighing and donning a hard hat. Well, if the princess calls me a silly pony, who am I to argue? Let's get to the bottom of this. With that, he stepped into the hallway. As Last Chance explored the ruins, he was constantly resisting the urge to salivate. Long-lost treasures abounded in every hall and throughout every room. He passed several ancient gems, numerous befuddling carved stone tablets, and mounds of coins. Last Chance smiled as he reached a large set of double doors. Several of the doors had signs hanging above their frames, but this one was different. Instead of cartoonish advice or strange warnings, this one simply said, No Entry with the only decoration being a strange sigil on the door itself. If there was this much treasure in the more accessible areas, what wonders were behind the first doors he'd seen actually forbidding entry? There were a number of handicaps Last Chance needed to use tools to overcome, though being an Earth Pony had its perks. Being able to identify whether or not a sigil was a defensive spell or a decoration was beyond his natural abilities. Pulling out a monocle, he held it over one eye and looked over the door. After a moment, he smiled. A simple lock spell. Luckily a good writer is always prepared. He took off the monocle, placing it back in his bag before pulling out a wooden stick with a knot at the end. Holding it in his teeth, he moved to the door and calmly knocked three times. A black glow enveloped the sigil, and Chance held his breath as the door opened with a click. Inside the room were four plinths, with a statue of a strange bipedal creature atop each. The first was large and imposing. The model posed as if defending against a threat. It wore simple iron armor, though there were strange etchings covering the surface. Its face was molded in primal joy, teeth clenched, and a fierce grin. 
Last Chance looked it over, trying to place the engravings, but they didn't make sense. One was of a bipedal figure being hit by a large carriage, another the same figure falling off of a bridge. At its feet were several objects that he didn't recognize. One was a small glass pane with a button at the bottom that shone as the light hit it. Beside it sat a set of keys with a small figure sitting primly on the ring. Finally, a strange object sat at the ends that reminded Last Chance of Griffin crossbows. Near each item was a plaque. Last Chance read them aloud, trying to figure out the secrets of the statues. The Tablet of Knowledge. When charged, this item has libraries worth of books available at the touch of a finger. He paused. The touch of finger? Anyways, the Keys of Hope. Wherever one of these keys fits shall be our true home. While our life may be different now, we will never stop searching for the way home. Last Chance stared at the keys. Awfully sentimental. Okay, now for the one I'm most curious about. He turned his gaze to the last inscription. And this is a freaking gun. Last Chance stared in annoyance. <sighs> that answers Jack Diddley. He moved to the next plinth. It held an obviously female statue wielding a bow with a loosely knocked arrow. The statue was draped in a thin cloth cover with silver embroidery. The flowing script of the embroidery reminded him of the strange symbols of the hillfolk in southern Equestria. Her face was more serene than the last statue, the sharp features of the statue seeming to fight against her almost ethereal calm. Below its plinth sat three more items. One was a simple rectangular box with a camel embossed upon its cover. Another was a plush animal, a leopard from the look of it. The last was a small pouch full of seeds. Once again, he read the plaques. <sighs> Death sticks. Strange artifacts that can provide a calming influence and make the user look cooler, but both addict and shorten the lifespan of the user. Shame follows every use. Last Chance raised an eyebrow. Who'd be stupid enough to use those? Moving to the next item, Last Chance found the plaque a bit smudged. He ran a hoof over it to clean off the grime. The Major, a true friend who has stood at our side for our entire lives. May his eternal vigil never falter. Last Chance looked at the plush animal. Sentimental again. Is this a shrine of sorts, or maybe a mausoleum? I should probably take some photos before I move anything. It won't get me a huge profit, but I should be able to sell them to a museum or university. Finally, he moved to the third item. Seeds from home. May we plant them only when we have truly found our way back. I guarantee you there are references to movies or some other stuff that I just did not get. Shit, you probably did immediately, so if you did, please do let me know in the comments. Anyways, let's get on to our scrumptious donators. Top donators are 630, Jaden Man, Only One Thing, Suru Orion, and Iron Sky. Darkside, Raiden, Narwhals, Black Moonheart, Pastel Skies, Austin Rulins, Stuhex, Sword Brother and Mordred, Omicron Lyrae, Will, Chris, Twinkie, Ride Soul, Badass Waffle, Shadow Moon, Luigi88, and so many more gorgeous people. Thank you all so much for watching this video and live life to the fullest.